Hello. Basin Sphere Program. Tired of harvesting rocks? Why not harvest a planet? Or a gas giant? Or a star? We're gonna see what we can build up today. Randomize your star cluster. Just barely avoid that. Yeah, that's fine. Just, ah, uh, home sweet home. Ah. Time to get started. We play as this thing, and we could do this. Or this. Or even this. First, we're gonna need one of these. So let's get some of this. I'm pretty sure you know how this works. Minor. Power. All right. Now we get this. Can we just take a second to admire how beautiful this is? <laughs> then we make one of these, and that gives what, us what this. I uh, like that. We make all of this, and we get this stuff, and then we take this, and all of this goes into this. And now this goes into this. Where do the copper ores go? Out here, of course. And then this goes here. And this goes here. Hooray! Amazon could do no better. Automation games are about efficiency, right? Wrong. We're going to take this planet into something that pleases me. And why stop there? FurCat is only 2.55 light years away. Unfortunately, if we want to get off the planet, it's going to start to look like this. I like to think of this new planet as... What would happen if Bitcoin miners needed a new source of energy? This is the Earth. And I need all of this coal. Here's the copper and the iron. See the iron moving there? And that all goes up here. Yes, we need row upon row of smelters. All of this winds up over here. Take a few more steps down the lane. And then you wind up in one of each resource land. Finally. All of that work culminates in this. But we've automated the entire resource collection chain now. Oh yeah, and because I don't want the game spoiled for me, I'm just going to keep all of the resources in one line. If I get it, it's going going in there. Even if that means our conveyor belts do wacky things like this. I've just made the conscious decision ahead of time to live with my bad decisions, even if they make you angry. So far we've covered only this much of the planet, too. God, look at all the wind turbines. They look terrifying in the distance, really. Beware, Beware the, the dangers, dangers of, of wind, wind power. power. A lot has changed. Everything is even more bad. I also learned that the planet conveniently converges on the North Pole. When you get there, the building grid gets all messed up. Let's just take a walk up there right now. Oh yeah, I forgot that we can fly now. Or just descend, sadly. You see, the north and south poles look more like circles than grids. I guess it just means we have to get off of this planet eventually and leave the world's worst factory behind. But there is something beautiful to behold here. Even if this factory is inefficient and makes no sense. Well, those are actually my favorite kinds of factories. Welcome to the Red Cube Science Highway. I only learned about red science later on in the game, and it took all of these other resource creations to figure it out. So we have to go back to our blue science lab over here, and that brings us back to where we started. So here's where we got the first resources. Then we made that into gears, plates, and all other kinds of industrial technology. We found coal powered it. We made this into belt hell. Then we started making buildings, but then we kind of got sidetracked, and now, since I'm actually reaching the North Pole soon, everything's kind of getting squished in at the top. It may be terrible, but it's kind of neat to see that we've colonized both sides of the planet now. What is that? And yet still so much surface we've yet to explore. Well, I didn't realize. Since everything narrows at the North Pole, my entire factory is pretty much doomed. Yeah, it's making everything really difficult. So we're going to have to start again. I know, but you loved Red Cube Land. Everything's just taking too long the way it is. So we need to go over to the other side of the world and start again. So I've gathered up one of each resource I need, and now I just need to fill in the ocean up here. Whoops, out of landfill. It's okay, we still have tons of stone. Yeah, that's better. Oh, Jesus Christ. There won't be an ocean anymore. And perceiving the great need for wind power and the uselessness of the North Pole, I've added all these wind turbines here. Okay, so I realized something about this game. Besides the fact that it's absolutely beautiful. Take a look at our map down here. This is only the first planet. We still have another planet. And then when we're done with that, we have other planets and stars. And then we have more other planets and stars. So what I'm trying to say is, your first planet should be a failed experiment. It's okay. Well, let's take a look at this abomination. This is where I started. Ore smelting belts. That was the main idea, but then it got very sidetracked because we couldn't fill in the ocean. Now I've decided to move to the other side of the planet. Oil, oil, oil refining tons of red science, because that's our big bottleneck. We still need this giant conveyor belt that runs 
basically the entire length of the planet's surface. And now we have an ungodly amount of wind turbines in the North Pole. Wind turbines as far as the eye can see. But at least we won't be bottlenecked by red science anymore. <laughs> now we just set up a new copper facility. It's worlds away from everything else. Connect that to our grid. And then we put all of this into this. Then we just make a slight trip halfway around the planet over to here. Good job, drones. We'll get there uh, someday. Look how sad that is. You can actually see the Earth's curvature, the way it's going. Sorry, just destroying this nice meadow. We're still only a quarter of the way there. Yep, just keep going. Don't worry, Copper, we'll get you there soon. Now we just make eight more of these. Connect those to the power. Make them all into copper plates. And then do this for all of those. There we go. Nice. Now, however, is where the real game begins. Not only can we do things like this, I also figured out that the height limit for belts was way higher than I expected. This one's just a racetrack going nowhere. And then back into itself right over here. I also figured out that you can just sail across the planet like this. So now we can just go off into space haphazardly. They call this sailing, but we don't have to stay on this planet. Or we could just do this land back here and recharge. I noticed that having 10 of these helped me at once, helped my battery. And now we just check the star map. I think I'd like to go there. So now we just bring up the speed to 200 meters per second. And here we are. Now we're on the planet, but we just can't land because whenever I get down to the planet's surface, he just continues hovering. There's also a few other planets to explore, though unfortunately our orbits just aren't near one another right now. We could always fly into the sun, but I think we'll try that at the end. Yeah, an ice giant. It's weird. I should be able to land on an ice giant. Oh well. Fortunately, our research is now going way faster. But now everything at the science factory is going along swimmingly. Science. There it is. Everything we need. Oh, too much science now. This is pretty much the name of the game here, as far as I can tell. Just keep going back until you figure out what the bottleneck is in your resource ratio. Once you do figure it out, your research speed speeds up by a lot. But until then, it's mostly just a matter of waiting. I'm waiting until we can get to the sun instantly. That's what my ambition is. That's a bit better. And although I hate traveling everywhere, the factory itself has become kind of beautiful. I feel like we've done a lot of damage to this planet. Just a nuisance of wind turbines. We've absorbed much of the ocean. Look over there, too. I mean, that's only the beginning of conveyor belt hell. You know it's it's only gonna get worse. This is the oil refining. This is the old factory. But I have greater ambition. Okay, the nearest object is the sun. I would be trolling you if we didn't visit the sun in this video. I'm literally just going to jump to the sun. I legitimately don't know what's gonna happen. All I know is that it's awfully quiet in space. I have to save before I get there. I mean, in theory, if this suit is heat resistant, we could just go through the sun. After all, stars are completely gaseous. There's nothing solid about them. Here we go. I hope we have enough fuel for the return journey. I've been thinking about this. I already have a prediction, but I'm not gonna say it. Oh God. Oh God, the light. Oh, what is it? No, turn back. Turn back. Come on. Come on, do it. So close. Only a few thousand meters away. Here we go. Oh. Well, that's weird. You just, like, skim off the surface. Where are we in the universe now? Okay, you know what? Let's just visit that other planet. That's a shame. So we can't- we can't land on the sun, but we can land on another planet. Come on, Iota Ari 1. Well, this planet looks completely barren, like the mercury of this solar system. Oh god, that looked painful. Okay, this place is, uh, it has a bleak wind about it. There's nothing likable about this planet, except it does have silicon veins. This place has a lot of silicon and copper. Unfortunately, we're low on fuel and we have no other sources besides the graphite I brought with me. So we're just going to have to mine for coal on this planet to get off. We have a few options from here. Can't really go to another star system, but in our solar system, I could either go home or go to Iota Eri 4. So many options. I guess the game will always let you thrust and navigate a little bit, otherwise you'd just be trapped in space. Though you could probably get yourself pretty lost out here. Well, it's home for me. Oh, that's not a great message. I get this eerie sense like Sandra Bullock and gravity. We can keep using our hydrogen gas reserves to fuel our journey. I think that's enough to get us home. And home is disappearing behind the ice giant. Ah, home sweet home. 
Gee, oh my god. Took it like a champ. Well, now with our towers researching faster, and red and blue cube lands working faster than ever, and more refined oil and storage than I really know what to do with at this time, I'd say that we're just about there. Before too long, we'll be going to other planets and setting up new factories. Yes, our factory is an amazing place, and due to fast travel, we no longer have to live in the night anymore. We could just keep following the sun. But we just researched structure matrices, and there's still so many more resources to go. So in closing, short of a review, I do think it adds a lot to the original formula of automation, and there's a lot to like here. A major thanks to the developers for the key to the game. I know it came out about a month ago, but, well, it took me about 10 hours to make 10 minutes of footage on the game. I just like seeing a lot of progress at once, so there you have it. A heartfelt thanks to my patrons for all the support, and thanks to viewers like you. I'm Ambiguous Amphibian. Cheerio!